Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ahmad Abdul Wahab, and this is the last episode of Season 1 of Highlights in Radiology. Since we are approaching the end of 2023, I want to wish you all Happy New Year and Merry Christmas and a safe practice of radiology with an excellent radiologic knowledge. This will be the last episode of Season 1 of Highlights in Radiology. We presented 16 episodes this season and I hope you find it beneficial and helped you in your everyday practice. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Tell your friends about us support us, and I'll meet you next year, inshallah, with a lot of new, exciting, and different topics. So, just wait. We will beat. In today's episode, we will talk about a pathology that we commonly see in everyday practice, and this is the unilocular cystic lesions of the pancreas. Of course, there are a lot of pancreatic pathologies, I chose to talk about unilocular cysts because they are important to differentiate from each other. And there is a very nice differential diagnosis here. Unilocular pancreatic pseudocyst can be one of four main differentials. It can be either pancreatic pseudocyst, intradectal papillary mucinous neoplasm, simple pancreatic cyst, and cystic neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas. Regarding the pancreatic pseudocyst, it's a very common sequelae of acute or chronic pancreatitis, and it's by far the most common cystic lesion of the pancreas. When acute pancreatitis starts, there will be fluid collection in the interstitium of edematous pancreas. There is no loculation, no cyst, just fluid surrounding or inside the pancreas. And this will last for about four weeks in the acute stage. And then after four weeks, we will go into an encapsulated peripancreatic or remote fluid collection that's away from the pancreas. We'll talk about that in the coming slides. Fluid collections in necrotizing pancreatitis are a little bit different. In the acute necrotic stage, in the first four weeks, there will be non-encapsulated, heterogeneous, non-liquefied material. We call it phlegmon, just material that is heterogeneous and non-encapsulated. After four weeks, there will be walled off necrosis. The body will surround the necrotic area with a wall, and again, it will be non-liquefied material. Radiologically, what we will see is a fluid-filled oval or round fluid collections they have relatively thick wall. Pancreatic pseudocysts have relatively thick wall, but the wall, it's from the human body. It's not a real wall. That's why it's a pseudocyst. It's not a real cyst. Pancreatic pseudocysts can be multiple, most commonly located in the head of the pancreas, but they can be seen anywhere from groin to the neck. The fluid collection can track through the diaphragm, and you might see a mediastinal fluid collection, and it turns out to be pancreatic pseudocyst. And you cannot differentiate infected from non-infected pancreatic pseudocyst just by radiology. You need histopathology or cytology or whatever. On ultrasound, you'll see a hypoechoic or anechoic collection with dependent echoes. And on the CT scan, we will see a well-circumscribed, round, oval, peripancreatic fluid collection with homogeneous low attenuation, and they are usually have a well-defined enhancing wall because it's part from the human body. It will take post-contrast enhancement, and on MRI, on T1, there will be a fluid hypo-intense signal, and on T2 will be a fluid hyper-intense signal. On T1, you will see the wall showing marked post-contrast enhancement, as time passes, it will show more contrast enhancement. On T2, you'll see the layering of the dependent debris. If you see these debris, it's highly suggestive of pancreatic pseudocyst. Let's see this example here. For example, you can see 
the pancreatic cystic lesion with a relatively thick wall showing some post-contrast enhancement. If you look here, and after an attack of an acute pancreatitis, this is most likely a pancreatic pseudocyst. While here, you can see a big pancreatic pseudocyst with thick enhancing wall, and it's around the anterior aspect of the pancreas, of the body of the pancreas. Another example of a multi-lobulated large cyst arising from the head of the pancreas, and you can see the wall is enhancing the heterogeneous content suggests infected pancreatic pseudocyst. In this example, we see a well-defined cyst at the anterior head, anterior aspect of the head of the pancreas. Of course, the size of the lesion can be from vary from small to very big. On ultrasound, you'll see a cystic lesion arising from the body of the pancreas here with some internal debris. Another ultrasound example with a cystic lesion containing turbid contents. This CT scan is very interesting. There is a large posterior mediastinal mass, cystic mass, displacing the heart and causing some mass effect on the adjacent lung structures. And this is a pancreatic pseudocyst tracking through the diaphragm up into the posterior mediastina. On MRI, you will see this large cystic lesion, thick wall containing internal debris. And this is suggestive, highly suggestive of pancreatic pseudocyst. Let's see this example here. There is a cystic lesion, thick wall, just anterior to the tail of the pancreas, showing fluid signal intensity on T2-weighted images. And on T1, it's also fluid signal intensity with relatively thick wall. When you give contrast, it will start enhancing. Another slightly delayed image show even more post-contrast enhancement. And this is in favor of pancreatic pseudocyst. The other differential diagnosis is intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. It's a lesion seen most commonly in elderly patients. They call it grandfather lesion because patients are most of the times older patients. We need to do an MRCP. MRCP is very helpful in this case. Why? Because on imaging in general, you will see a lesion, cystic, single or multiple, unilocular or septated pancreatic cystic lesion. The trick is that it communicate with the pancreatic duct, either the main duct or the side ducts of the pancreas. So you'll see a unilocular or multilocular single multiple septated lesion that communicate with the pancreatic duct. Most commonly we see it in the pancreatic head, but not always. The key feature to differentiate it from other lesions is communication with the pancreatic duct, and this will help us to distinguish it from other pancreatic neoplasms like mucinous or serous cystadenoma or cystadenocarcinoma. Really, rarely they might show calcific foci. It's been reported, but it's very rare. On ERCP, you will see a dilated pancreatic duct, more than 5 mm, and you might see a polypoidal lesion filling the main or the side branches of the pancreatic duct. You can see the side branches here are dilated, forming what's called bunch of grapes, okay? And this is the lesion right here. Ultrasound will demonstrate small thin wall pancreatic cysts or dilated hypoechoic ducts, and the main pancreatic duct is more than 5 millimeter in caliber, you can see sometimes a mural nodule or globules of mucine that appears hyperechoic, and they are difficult to differentiate from the pancreatic parenchyma. The pancreas is hyperechoic and the mucine is hyperechoic, so they can be difficult to differentiate. On CT scan, we will see single or multiple pancreatic cysts that are hypodense lesions with dilatation of the main pancreatic duct over 5 mm. So, for example, in this case here, we will see a cystic lesion in the head of the pancreas. It's small, the uncinate process specifically. And if you look carefully, there is a slightly dilated side branch duct here, suggesting possibility of IPMN. On ultrasound, we will see 
the cystic lesion here in the area of the uh, uncinate process of the pancreas. And again, you can see it here. It's septated lesion in this case. You have to look for connection with the pancreatic duct, but that's a very difficult uh, thing. So if you don't see it, don't worry. Just go for MRC. Another case of ultrasound, you can see here the pancreatic cyst, and it has some subtations. And here is another example of the pancreatic cyst with dilated pancreatic duct more than 5 millimeter. However, here, luckily, we can see the connection with the main pancreatic duct. So this confirms that this is an IPMN. Another CT scan. We see the small cystic lesion here in the pancreas, and you can see the rest of the pancreas is a little bit atrophic with slightly prominent pancreatic duct. On MRI, the main uh, duct, if the IPM involves the main duct, we will see the irritation of the main duct, more than 5 millimeter. If it's connected with the branch or from the pancreatic duct, uh, the branch will be dilated, and or even the whole pancreatic duct also can be dilated, and they are filled with the mucine, so it's a fluid signal intensity material. If you see mural nodules, soft tissue mural nodules in the lesion, they are concerning, could be possible malignant transformation, especially if these nodules show post-contrast enhancement. If there is post-contrast enhancement in a mural nodule, be careful, it might be malignant transformation of the lesion. Sometimes you can see the mucinous material bulging out from the ampulla of water. It's uncommon, but if you see the mucinous material bulging from the ampulla of water, that's pathognomonic, diagnostic from, for IPMN. And uh, the mucinous globules, they do not enhance and will lie dependently, will lie low in the main duct because they are heavy. In a branch duct IPM, and the majority of the gland will be normal appearance. It will appear, the pancreas will be all, uh, almost all, you know, all of it will be normal, except for a single or multiple side branches that will demonstrate marked dilatation. So the gland is normal, side branches, one or multiple will be markedly dilated. This is a branch IPM, and they call it a bunch of grapes. And there is, of course, a mixed type IPMN, which involves the side branch and the main duct. And it's just like an advanced branch duct IPMN with pancreatic duct dilatation more than 5 millimeters. So if you see the side branch is dilated, the pancreatic duct dilated, this could be a mixed type IPMN. For example, let's look here. This is a very characteristic cystic lesion here with thinning of the adjacent parenchymal uh, pancreas. On MRCP, we will see this cystic lesion, and obviously it is connected with the main pancreatic duct, and this confirms the presence of an IPMN, since it's communicating, and you can see the duct here is dilated more than 5 millimeter. So this is a main duct IPMN. A main duct IPMN in the tail of the pancreas. You can see here, this is a T1 post-contrast image. You can see the lesion, it's cystic, it's in the tail, and there is thinning of the rest of the parenchyma of the pancreas. Another example of T2, fat-saturated images of the abdomen. You can see this is the uh, lesion here, and the main pancreatic duct is dilated more than 5 millimeters, suggesting IPMN. In this example of a T1 fat-saturated image post-contrast, you can see the cystic lesion here with thinning of some areas of the pancreas. It's not enhancing. Now, the other differential diagnosis is simple pancreatic cyst. Simple pancreatic cyst, it's a real cyst. It has a real wall of epithelium. Uh, they are unilocular cysts within the pancreas, and they lack the communication with the pancreatic duct. So it's not like IPMN, or uh, they do not look like IPMN. Uh, 
they are real cysts would, which do not communicate with the pancreatic duct, they are rare. So if you see a cyst in the pancreas, think of pancreatic pseudocyst rather than simple pancreatic cyst. They are rare. As any cyst, in radiology, we will see pure fluid contents with imperceptible wall, just like a simple renal cyst. The same thing, but in the pancreas. There is no solid components, no septation, no enhancement, no calcification, no hemorrhage, and the background of the pancreas will be normal. Unremarkable pancreas, just a cyst sitting there, and it has no communication with the main pancreatic duct. On ultrasound, CT, and MRI, we will see no evidence of any pathology in the pancreas. The background pancreas looks completely normal on all imaging modalities, like in this condition here. For example, in this patient, you can see this is a very well-defined cyst with a normal pancreas. So it turned out to be a simple pancreatic cyst. Again, on ultrasound, you can see this is a cyst in the head of the pancreas, and the background pancreas is completely normal. So might suggest a simple pancreatic cyst. However, be careful, it is rare. It's not common. Again, another lesion here. You can see in the tail of the pancreas, very well-defined cystic density lesion with completely normal pancreas, no duct dilatation, clear surrounding fat planes, suggesting a simple pancreatic cyst. Again here, cyst in the body of the pancreas with completely normal surrounding pancreas. See this MRI, axial image, T2-weighted, fat-saturated. You have a small cyst in the head of the pancreas, and the surrounding pancreas is normal. The surrounding fat planes is normal. No signs of invasion, infection, no soft tissue component, no nodules, no nothing, suggesting simple pancreatic cyst. The other differential diagnosis is cystic neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas. They are mostly isolated tumors. One to two percent of them is associated with multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1. Also, they are associated with von Hippel-Lindau disease and tuberous sclerosis. On CT scan, they will appear as a highly vascular, well-circumscribed, sometimes at displacing the adjacent structures and can demonstrate cystic uh, or calcific uh, component. And that's why I involved it in the cystic lesions of the pancreas. They can be solid, they can demonstrate cystic uh, component and can demonstrate calcific uh, component also. On ultrasound, they will appear as well circumscribed, smooth margin, round, oval, hypoechoic. You might see liver metastasis, uh, liver metastasis might be hypoechoic or target appearance. On CT scan, they are similar to any other tumor. They will be uh, hypervascular and they tend to be homogeneously enhancing and well circumscribed. Larger tumor will show heterogeneous post contrast enhancement, will contain cystic areas and necrotic changes, and occasionally they manifest as primarily cystic lesion and are dis indistinguishable from other cystic neoplasms only by their hypervascular rim. So if you see hypervascular rim, think it might be a cystic type of neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas. Neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas, they tend to displace rather than invade the surrounding structure. And less commonly cause biliary obstruction than pancreatic adenocarcinoma. So usually they displace, not invade, which is more seen in pancreatic adenocarcinoma, and less commonly to cause uh, biliary obstruction than uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma. So if you see lesion that's displacing the adjacent structures and not causing biliary obstruction, think possible uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. And the peak contrast enhancement of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor is in the early arterial phase, while pancreatic adenocarcinoma, they show enhancement in the late arterial or even uh, venous phase. So they are opposite to each other. The uh, pancreatic uh, neuroendocrine tumor, they take early contrast enhancement, while adenocarcinoma take later 
and uh, contrast enhancement. So this is a very good point to differentiate between the two. On MRI, we will have hypo-intense signal relative to the pancreas on T1, and on T2, it's a hyper-intense signal relative to the pancreas, just like any other tumor. And on contrast images, there will be hyper-intense, hypervascular enhancement early relative to the pancreas, and they will show diffusion restriction. So let's see some examples. For example, here you can see this is a large cystic lesion with marked large soft tissue component, confirming this is a solid lesion that is showing central necrosis, in fact. And you can see the uh, liver metastasis. And if you look carefully, although it's large, it's displacing the surrounding structures rather than invading them. And this is in favor of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. So in this case, we can see this uh, MRI image, T1 post-contrast, fast saturated. You can see the lesion here in the pancreatic tail showing hyper-intense or hypervascular contrast enhancement relative to the rest of the pancreas. And if you look around it, the surrounding part looks normal. It's not uh, infiltrated or enhancing. You can see in this example here, there is a cystic lesion in the pancreas, large, displacing the pancreas. And this was a case of cystic uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. Let's see another example. Multilobulated lesion with central septi. It's in the tail of the pancreas, showing wall post-contrast enhancement, and it's displacing rather than invading. And this large mass with displacement without invasion turned out to be neuroendocrine tumor. Again, a cystic lesion with a mural nodule that is showing post-contrast enhancement, suggesting pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. This was all for today's episode. This will be the last episode of this season, season one of Highlights in Radiology. I will meet you in a few months with season two of Highlights in Radiology with what I think are very important, very interesting topics to talk about and for every one of us to know. Don't forget to support us with subscribing to the channel, sharing, liking, commenting, any ideas or any suggestions you have. I will be more than happy to hear it. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, and stay safe. And I hope to meet you all in good health and happiness. This was Dr. Ahmad Zia Abdul Wahab, and this is the last episode of Season 1 of Highlights in Radiology. See you next year. Bye.